Pulp Secret is brought to you by Zunart's new graphic novel, The Lost Ones. I am a golden god. Oh my god. I am the king of all I purvey. Hey guys, welcome to the stack. I'm Alex. I'm, Ju I'm Justin. I'm Pete. And we've got a couple of news around our reviews for you guys. X-Men Legacy number 214, Batgirl number 1, and Avengers Initiative number 15. We're also going to have a speed round of your mail, so stay tuned for that. But let's get right into the titles with X-Men Legacy number 214. Yeah, this sucks. Oh, hey, whoa. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, wow. That was heavy with sarcasm. Why does it suck? Uh, well, first of all, it's just all over the place, and uh, I wasn't buying into, buying into it. I was just like... What is going on? This art blows. I was not happy with it. I don't know if it was just maybe where I was at mentally when I was reading it, but... This is I, my jaw dropping, by the way, because this title gets better and better oh, with each come on. issue. I absolutely think Defend so. Defend it then. Yes. What's so great about Tell it? Me. I love this series now. You are lying. No, I am totally not lying. Right. I think it, the plot... I know I got, went back and forth on it. I wasn't quite sure, and I'm still not quite sure why this is an ongoing series. But looking at it as these five or six issues as a mini series of Xavier versus Sinister, it's great. I well, love this. No, stuff. and then it, it was... builds on continuity, ties into it nicely, and builds a slam bang story to a slam. What about bang that last page? Can't... You weren't like. Mm. Ridiculous. No, it's it not fine. It's totally fine for the character. I like that the, they're really using the continuity of Professor yeah. Xavier and finally exploring like his story, but it's just so all over the place. And like, thank you, Sinister, thank and these you, glass Justin. jars, the Chronos thing. It's like, what? It's I like don't a, know. I like it a lot. I think it came together really nicely at the end of the arc. Disagree. You are. I can't believe you like that. You've shocked me today. Well, shock upon shock. We are going to talk about Batgirl number one. <laughs> Goom! What did you guys think of that? This was also bad. <laughs> yeah, I was kind of like, meh. I felt like, uh, you know, it was nice to see the family together, the Bat family. But uh, You look like you're hungry. <laughs> no, I was about to say, I would rather eat this issue than read it again. Yeah. No, yeah. <laughs> What's especially terrible about it is uh, you go through half the story and then there's a two-page spread where literally no. it's pictures of Batman, Robin, and Nightwing. They're like... This is what happened to Cassandra, and it goes on and on, thought it's, bubbles and It's almost bubbles. interminable, actually. Yeah. That, like, there's a recap of who she is at the beginning of the issue, and then a recap of the middle, and then it sets something up at the end that I was like, I don't know what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I, Cassandra well, Kane, I've never really been into the character. I, they I haven't know really a lot used of people her have, and that's fine, but it's just like, this is the wrong way to relaunch her in her own series. Yeah. I also don't like the fact that, like, when you're doing something, it, it just Batman is not stupid. He was just very dumb in this issue, and I was like, this doesn't make any sense. I have a huge problem with every writer, when there's a new person introduced into the Bat family, they have to rotate who hates that person. Yeah, right. And in this case, it's Batman and Robin are like, yeah, we like Cassandra, she and Nightwing's like, I don't like her. Yeah. Yeah. But then with Damien, it's Batman and Nightwing like Damien, and Robin hates him. Yeah. And it just keeps going and going and going, and it's enough already. Yeah. I don't know, I wish... Batman I hope needs to that the sit series gets down. better. I hope it's just a first issue itis, but I don't know. It just really. alienates all new readers, which is the exact opposite one. I will say the Jim Kelly for art is good. Yes. yes. Like, oh, I like, agree with that yeah. as well. Yeah. All right, let's move on to talk about Adventures Initiative number 15, continuing the Secret Invasion storyline. We've been pretty harsh on Secret Invasion in general. What do you think about this issue? The art is amazing. I just want to say that. I'll it's probably. very Rob Liefeldian, I thought. Ooh, I don't know if I agree with that. But I do feel like um, there was some interesting twists and turns and some interesting developments as far as like who's on whose side and who's doing what and who believes in what. So I think they're really, uh, you know, kind of taking this whole scroll invasion and really dissecting it. At least in Avengers the Initiative, stuff is happening, and we're following a few characters, and they're making choices and going through yeah, uh, and, something. And it makes sense. You can kind of follow and, it. Yeah, and it's happening in the present. We're seeing the actual yeah. invasion take place. Because so far, it's been a, a secret with the invasion is because it hasn't happened. <laughs> oh, snap. Kind of snap. Um, This series is just solid across the board, pretty yeah. much every single issue. Yeah. It's great. And I agree with you guys. It's completely surprising that the satellite titles feel bigger. I mean, yes. beyond anything else, it feels like an actual invasion as opposed to 
the main issues that feel like this tiny, tight, insular little thing, this feels right. like something that's happening on a global scale. It's being like, yeah, The Dark Knight was pretty good, but the commercials were amazing for it. You know, they <laughs> yes. really tell no, the story. Right. Right. No, that's a very good metaphor. Thank you. I know what metaphor means. Oh, the word. Congratulations. Well, what's a metaphor? <laughs> uh, well, huh? why don't we take a break and you explain it to me? Oh, okay. that's good. <laughs> All right, after the break, we're going to find out what metaphors are. We're also going to have a speed round in viewer mail, so stay tuned. So, yeah, yeah, so yeah, what so happens is, it's like a lie, but for a reason. Oh. Wait, like, wait, wait. I, I didn't really enjoy the commercials for Dark Knight, but I said it like a lie. To prove a point? No, just oh. a lie. Like a dark lie. <laughs> yeah, good, good. Yeah, say that's a metaphor. That's a metaphor. <laughs> I don't know, I'm still lost. <laughs> Zone Arts presents a graphic novel from Steve Niles, author of 30 Days of Night. <laughs> Featuring the artwork of Dr. Revolt, Morning Breath, Kimmy Buzelli, Gary Panter. One epic story told by five groundbreaking artists. The Lost Ones. Read it now at zoonarts.net. And that is where babies come from, Alex. Oh, oh. thanks. I can't That's... wait to put a baby in you. Yeah, I know. Okay, no, no, I don't know, know if you understood what I said. <laughs> All right. It is Stars, time for a huh? speed round. Speed round. Pete. Uh, Pete. Okay, yes. Pete, uh, start talking. <laughs> The Goblin Chronicles number three. It is uh, three of three, which is sad. This was a fantastic book for all ages that was very enjoyable and very well drawn. Cool. 1985 number three. I've been enjoying the series so far, but I wish there was more that went on in every issue. Yeah. Uh, it's well drawn, it's well plotted, very good dialogue across the board, but I, I just, there's not a lot happening at this point. Uh, Joker's Asylum, uh, Poison Ivy. I we slammed the first issue of this, and quite so because it wasn't good. The Penguin issue that came out last week, and then this issue uh, were great. Uh, definitely <laughs> pick them both. <laughs> the Flash number two forty two. Yay! Hey, I'm gonna. Act, uh, I'll act out the comic. You just yeah. Review. This is currently a really solid run on this title. Solid um, run. Uh, no, it really is. It right. very much surprised me. It, it feels like. I think it's supposed to be a fill-in writer, but they're doing a very solid job. It's not the most spectacular Flash tale ever, but it's doing a nice job with the Flash, tying into the current continuity, and I'm really enjoying it, and it's building as it's going on. Uh, Method Man made a comic, called it Method Man. Uh, the <laughs> what the art <laughs> is really great. Uh, the story is cool. Uh, it's well written, it's a little self-obsessed with the really? fact that he brings up his name a lot. And uh, But uh, really yeah. very Is imaginative, like, very... Get a Coke? Uh, very exciting, very, it's a cool little world. It's, I would it's recommend him ordering it. lunch. Although it is $15. I'm talking in the middle of a speed round. Oh my god. He what is the? Murder. Jeez, I need to I'm run gone. away from you. I'm out of here. This Pete, 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 come back, come back. No, come on. No, what kind Pete, of I'll put a baby in you. I'll put a baby in you, Pete. Uh, that doesn't Can still, we get to the viewer? Uh, wow. You are well. ornery today. Oh man. Uh, John writes in, Pete, it's okay, we really like you guys. That's what John said. I don't yeah. think John really said that. Uh, John writes in, Someone once showed me an exchange between two comics creators, Rags Morales and Rob Liefeld, on a public forum, and it was just nasty, the things that they were saying <laughs> to each other. I was wondering what you guys think about creator rivalries in the supposedly professional comics industry. Do you guys think this serves the fans in any way? Do you think just any sort of competition is healthy competition? Thanks. Thank you, Casey Kasem. <laughs> wow. I'm Casey amazing. Kasem. And this goes out to a little girl out in Wyoming <laughs> who's still missing her father. Daddy, you are God and I... Oh, oh, that's Casey. so horrifying. <laughs> this is crazy. I just wish you could abbreviate a little bit more so you wouldn't have to sit here and listen to you read the whole thing. Oh my God, um, this guy. But no, John brings up a good point. Does bickering make the industry better? Oh! oh what? You what? are a genius. <laughs> yes, it does. Because sometimes it points out sometimes it points out flaws in the system and the way things are done. So you know, sometimes it doesn't get us anywhere, but at sometimes it does make a point. You just this blew is my, my job mind. dropping because yeah, you just blew my mind. You outfoxed <laughs> both. both of us. <laughs> Which, that was incredible. Yeah. Um, I can't even think. 
Uh, yeah, that's, uh, I don't know, whatever Pete said. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, Pete really nailed that. Thank I you, John. I appreciate God. it. John, <laughs> you allowed Pete to totally put one over on us. So I just lost job. a million dollar bet with God. Uh, <laughs> that that would never happen. Uh, well, what do you guys think? Uh, uh, does <laughs> professional competition isn't healthy for the industry? Uh, do you agree with Pete? Or I don't know what else is going on. <laughs> if you have a question, you can call us at 888-841-7449 or write into tips at pulpsecret.com. You can upload your video responses on YouTube or comment right here below. And if you're ever in New York City, come visit us every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. at Comic Book Club or live show. All the details are on pulpsecret.com. Also, you should, you should visit us in New York City. You should also visit us in San Diego. We are going to be having a panel on Thursday tomorrow, uh, unless you're watching this on Thursday, in which today, or later, in which case, sorry, you missed it. Nice. Uh, so definitely that covers check all that out. You, right? <laughs> yeah, I think uh, we got also, everything. we are going to be having our own comic book club panel on yes. Saturday at 530. Uh, so check that out. We're going to have some awesome guests, and we'll be running around the floor. So if you see us, Tip your hat and say hello. <laughs> <laughs> Give us a bicky and be on your way. All right, uh, we will see you guys. Yes. Um, also, we're going to have show a bunch of stuff that we tape on this very website. Yeah, oh, yeah so Check that out, and we will see you guys next time. Let me just find yeah. the mask here. <laughs> At the tone, leave a message. We'll get back to you. Fables, because it's just too much. It can be wrapped up in a movie. Alan Moore's Promethea is such a celebration of what comic books are and what they can be. It's just pretty much unfilmable. Uh, ambush Bug should never be made into a movie. It just would be impossible, the transition. Howard the Duck. No, wait. Never mind. I'm not buying it, Lloyd. You cannot not agree. America I mean, has made its choice. We have not sold out. I would love to sell out.